everybody Chance Large here with another let's fix it video for you and on the bench today we have got this big orange box what's in it I hear you ask let me show you it is a multi-tool uh, basically it's a, um, a Stein multi-master and uh, belongs to a very good friend of mine and he says he no work proper and uh, he doesn't speak like that I don't know why I did that it doesn't work properly basically what he's saying is when it's working if this cable is loosened from this bit of gaffer tape when he goes to use it it stops and starts so I think it's going to be a quite simple fix I think it's a case of the mains cable here is broken inside here by taping it back here he's stopped it from breaking down so let's plug it in and see how it goes. Now I think he uses it for decorating work so uh, it's a bit dusty it may have quite a bit of dust inside it so we'll make sure it's not switched on first it seems to be off. Ooh. And there it is it's definitely Definitely something wrong with that mains cable. So I think the quick answer is basically we take it apart and we uh, do some continuity testing just to make sure. Uh, but it could also be that inside here there is a break in the cable itself or it could be just a connection inside there. So we'll have a little look. We'll peel off this gaffer tape that he's stuck on there. Hopefully it won't leave too much residue. Wonderful stuff but I hate the residue it leaves behind when you peel it off. Yuck. Might have to give that a go with some isopropyl we'll get that off. Right so we have got um, apart from a bit of something stuck in the vent a bit of rubber uh, one two three four five six and they look like star shaped screws let me just bring it up here and show you they're probably better there star shaped screws they're not torques as I don't think they're torques let me just grab a t10 torx actually a t10 torx will fit it but I'd rather use the right tool and um, I just happen to have a set of star spanners here not star spangled banners <laughs> I'm full of full of jokes today that looks about the right size and I think that's the one no that's the one just too big that's a T26 this is a T20 and that's too big as well and the next one down is a T that fits it much nicer than that T10 did so so we're going to use this uh, tool to undo all the screws right that's those all out if we can actually pull them out. There we are. So let's just very gently we've got to um, two halves of the casing um, and I'm just easing it apart to see which part of the casing comes away the easiest because sometimes one side of these sort of tools will come away easier than others and it seems to be that side with the screws which is sort of logical and that's the on off switch there to this 
So let's release this cable clamp. I'll have to have a look in my toolbox. I'm pretty sure I've actually got um, that that is more of a Torx than a star screw. The reason I got these, uh, just to show you, is that these have got a hole inside them and they're useful for security screws. Sometimes you can't, um, you get these security screws on devices like cameras, etc., um, where uh, they're designed so you can't take them off with just ordinary Torx drivers. Let's take that out. Now, is that a push fit? I think these wires are push fit. There's like a a, a grip in there, it looks like. So yeah, I'm right. So just to show you that, let's, uh, let's zoom in on that so you can see. Right, so what we've got here is, is like a, they, these wires push into there and then to get them out you push this little plastic piece in and then pull the wire out and it really the pushing the plastic piece in releases the grip on it hopefully let's find something a little bit more substantial to push in there because i can't press it with that let's just push it in a little bit harder there we go so there's the two wires so we're pretty sure that the fault is within this bit of cable here somewhere well, luckily that uh cable uh, grommet is loose so we can push that right back we can reuse that let's get our test meter on there stick it on continuity make sure it's working clamp that onto that one there which is the negative and sure enough we've got no negative until we do that or is that mic let's just make sure that's a good grip on there all right and let's just go on the positive yeah so it's only the negative wire which is which is broken wondering how far down it is and I'll, I'll be guessing that it's around here somewhere so if I just give it a pull yeah now we know exactly how far it is so we can go back and we can cut it to about here let's give it a cut off about there There's two new wires, so we need to bear off about down to here. Just going to make a little mark in there. Now, some people will to try and trim back uh, rubber wires. Let me just take this camera out a little bit. I think I wasn't watching, but I think I may have missed how far. So let me just go over that again. That's the length where the brake was just down here so I've cut that much off there and then we want to bear off just this amount of there so what I've done is I made a little nick in the rubber casing there some people will try and uh, trim this off they'll either use a blade and go around and then end up cutting the inner uh, insulation what I like to do when, when I've got this especially as it's a device that somebody's going to be you know really working hard I don't want to have any uh, damage to the inner cores I just want to make a little mark on there by a nick I haven't cut through it and then I just put my cutters just inside there if you use a thinner pair of cutters just in the front and then just gently work your way down the rubber so you're keeping the the curved side of the cutters against the inner cores. There's probably a tool for doing this and I have got a pair of wire strippers but I don't like risking them with stuff that's mains borne. So I cut that back to that far 
and we can see we haven't touched the inner core and then all we've got to do is just trim back the outer rubber shield like so just make sure now this is where my uh, wire strippers will come in handy always make sure you cut slightly not so uh, deep into the inner core as you want it's, sometimes it's better to cut a little bit you can see I've, I've put little marks on my cutter to sort of show the right position so as we're going to bear off that much twist it pull it and hopefully we've not yeah we haven't cut any of the inside so that one as well pull it and we're done now I've got two options here I can try and remove those metal spikes off of there which I think is going to be quite a lot of hard work so all I'm going to do and I think it's probably perfectly okay to do I'm just going to solder tin these with solder so whilst that soldering iron is warming up I'm just going to give this a quick blow with my aero duster just to get rid of some of this dust make life a little bit easier right giving it a, a bit of a blow out and a brush out uh, of all the bits and pieces um, just actually look at the inside of this uh, we've got a motor a stand, fairly standard AC motor in there then we've got a control system here with a little uh, regulator for speed control there's the adjustment there on the side so that's basically uh, all this device is um, now I'm just thinking whether to give this commutator in here a little bit of a clean up um, but it's going to be a little bit awkward I think it'd be alright I, I don't think I need to bother with that right so the soldering iron is now warmed up get the old helping hands out here and we'll just make sure that wires are twisted firmly around in the way that they came through and then we'll just with a clean soldering bit just heat the wire up and make sure we've got a nice flow of solder onto all of that do the same there and that just keeps the wires together makes for a nice solid connection when I push that into the connectors so let's go for a reassembly so that goes into there a little switch goes in there and in, goes over the switch connector like so sits in that little slot and then the wires ah, I didn't make a mark of which way round that went bear with me a second Right, uh, just look back on the video and the live was on the left hand side. I suppose if I'd have followed it through I probably could have remembered it. Anyway, push the live wire into there. And hopefully it's just a push fit into this connector now, like so. Same with the neutral. Nice solid push fit. Excellent. Cable around there. And clamp. Was that six, seven? Right. The other thing I was just going to check, make sure, see if I've got a, a T uh, twelve, uh, a T fifteen Torx with a handle. That make it easier rather than using this tool. Bear with me. Ah, isn't life wonderful? I've actually got uh, a multi-tool uh, myself with various bits and I've got a T15 driver. 
So uh, that will make life putting this back together a lot easier. Oh, now just before I put that in I just realised the rubber sleeve needs to sit in there. Is that going to do? Or oh, Yeah, that's going to go in there. Right. Yeah, I've got that clamp moved slightly out of position. Let's undo it anyway. Go on clamp. It should be in there in that slot. Nice and tight. That's like so. It's just like so. I suppose I could make life even easier if I took that bit and put it into my screwdriver. Can't get it into that one. I don't know whether the bit might shell out. No, it won't. So I'm going to have to use this at the end to tighten up after all on some of these. Okay, and I think I'll just give it a little extra pull. Yeah. On some of these just to make sure it's nice and firm but without being too overly tight. If you do screws up into plastic overly tight, they will crack. So it's finger tight and then just a little pull. Just to lock it. There we go. So, it should be all up and running with a bit of luck. Switched off, plugged in. And we're done. Job done. I'll just give it a little bit of a clean up with some isopropyl alcohol. So let's just switch it on. The control works as well. So, not a bad little, uh, quick little job. A little bit of dirt in there. A little bit of dust left over from the last job by the look of it. Let's clean that off. I do like to give things a bit of a clean for people when they bring stuff to me. If it's if it's grossly dirty, at least I've shown that bit of care has been given so that should be right there we are all done get this uh, box back up and give it back to the customer hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching do like and subscribe really appreciate that if you do uh, and I'll see you on the next video cheerio